Well then, Bunny. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So you mean my Aurora plastic models, which were glow in the dark, was peace pee, pee, priest pee? What? Was what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Priest that was priest pee. pee. That was priest pee. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. German German monks urine. <laughs> yeah. Well then, Bunny, we made it. We made it through another real mixed bag of an episode and finally got to the main event, the yes. main course, the some third thing starting with main. I don't know. <laughs> vein, main artery. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this week, we're doing the biggest DC cinematic motion picture of all time. Essentially, it's DC's The Avengers. But this movie, unfortunately, is not as cut and dry as all that. This week's film brings up more questions than it does answers. For example, this is their first big team-up movie. Then why does it feel like the end of the DC Cinematic Universe? <laughs> This is supposed to be the first time they're teaming up, and it seems like uh, it's so hard to say goodbye yeah. to yesterday. I know. Also, why does the CGI look so bad? Why did it look so bad? I don't it know. It looked really fucking bad. <laughs> it's 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 like like I know CGI isn't like ink. You don't need to wait for the CGI to dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it seems like you should have waited for the CGI to dry. <laughs> yes. It's like you can see the background rendering in real time, like a Zelda game, or like you're playing Silent Hill for the first time. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does it look so bad? And God damn it, Wonder Woman, you knew Captain Kirk for like a week and a half, and that was 100 years ago! <laughs> Get over it! Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> and God damn it, Zack Snyder, Look, we get it. You're really proud of your Watchmen movie, okay? But did you have to make Batman look like he's cosplaying as the fucking Night Owl? And cosplaying is definitely it. That that costume was off. It made him look fat. Yeah, yeah. It that that was the first him thing that Amber. That was the first thing that Amber said when Batman showed up. She said, "Why is he so fat?" And I'm like, "Okay, it's a different sort of Batman than you're used to in the movies. He's older and more, more world weary. It's the Dark Knight Rises. It, it's a long story, yeah. but basically, his outfit is shit, and he shouldn't look this fat. It's not Fat Man. <laughs> God damn it! And since when did Arthur Curry become a cast member on fucking Entourage?" <laughs> Hey, what's up, bro? We're going to go defeat this bad guy. It's going to be totally hella awesome. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. And also, which, if you which wanted... one are you talking about there? Fucking uh, Aquaman. Aquaman? Okay. Yeah. Because it could have been the Flash as well. And also, what if made you them, wanted Aquaman... What made them hire fucking Corky Romano for the Flash? I, it took me a while to realize that the guy who played the Flash was the flamboyant gay kid from The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Okay. It took me a really long time to realize that. Oh, my God, that's the same guy? That's the same, like, flamboyantly gay. You're writing a book? Well, then you should call it Slut and the Falcon. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize. Okay. You play st you straight you play straight nerd really well. <laughs> yeah. And if you wanted Aquaman to be Roman Reigns, then you should have just fucking hired Roman Reigns. Yeah. And don't get me started on the freaking Flash, because then this intro will never end. No, yes, we we, we, are we have to we have to go there. Flash was just Spider Man. 
Yes, Flash thank you. Was just Spider Man, played Peter by Corky Black. by Corky Romano. But the, but the thing is about this movie for me, I was seeing shit all over the mo- all over this movie. It's like, oh well, I think they grabbed this from here. Yeah, and they grabbed this from here. And they grabbed all these kind of random elements and threw them together and, you know, thought it was a good movie. Yeah. It's freaking ridiculous. This worked really good in Iron Man. Let's do it. Yeah. And I love TV's The Flash. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's a sore point for me. Yeah, yeah. I love that kid. Uh, what are you giving me, Eleanor? You brought me one peanut. Thank you. <laughs> I think. Uh, is it okay to eat this? Where did you have this peanut? I'm starting to get worried. <laughs> Don't eat well, it. I, I already ate it. No. I already. Oh. I, I, I vaguely trust her. Oh, my gosh. I, I wouldn't. She's got shifty eyes. She does. Eleanor, are you shifty? Are you shifty? Should I trust you, Eleanor? She she can't she can't answer because she has a mouthful of peanuts. <laughs> yeah. Eleanor, I think you're shifty. Yeah. Oh, you're shaking your head? You are shifty? Okay, good to know. Good to know. Thank you for that. So Okay, let's finish. Try to collect ourselves. Um, Yes, we are finally getting around to watching the deeply infuriating 2007 superhero team-up film, Justice League! Yes. Now, I'm a positive guy. I try to be a positive guy. I try to have a positive spin on things. It's all about the polls. Mm Mm-hmm. Positivity. So before we shit all over this fucking movie, I I want to start. <laughs> I want to start this on a positive note. So here's one thing that I loved. Okay. Okay. One thing that I loved. I loved. I absolutely loved waking up this morning and hearing that Weird Al Yankovic has a new polka medley featuring music from the musical Hamilton. All right. It's called the Hamilton Polka, and it's amazing. <laughs> the crazy thing is that they actually they worked on this independently of each other. Yeah, yeah, and then eventually it, it, this they has got, absolutely yeah. nothing to do with the musical. He was not inspired by the musical. He just decided to do his own musical on no, uh, Hamilton. Lin Man, Lin Manuel is like, "Hey, Weird Al, I was wondering if you would do a song." Uh, like a like a Hamilton song and Weird Al said, oh, well, that's funny because I was going to get in contact with you to see if I could get the rights because uh, I made a polka medley <laughs> of your music. And so it, it just so happened that it's like, OK, great. So we're both going to get what we want. And now you're giving me a cheese puff. Thank you, Eleanor. I'm just going to set it down here, though. <laughs> Not that I don't trust you, Eleanor. I'm just going to save it for later. Okay. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yay. Ah! Yay. Yay. Eleanor, Yay. So, so I loved that. I love Weird Al Yankovic's new Hamilton uh, monologue, a, a, a polka medley. Yes. But, but to be clear, uh, that has nothing to do with this movie. This movie is shit. <laughs> But before we get to the stats and really break down this movie, I want to talk about the battle. The battle. This brings me so much joy. Justice League came out in mid-November of 2017. Yes. And Thor Ragnarok came out only two weeks before Mm -hmm. Justice League. There was a Thor movie, and then two weeks later, and there was Justice League. And oh my God, I was so freaking nervous about that. Yeah. We had this, we've had this podcast 
since the end of 2014, and I spent a lot of time on this podcast worrying, freaking the fuck out about this battle because I, the way I, I saw it was, oh my God, this Thor movie, it's going to be more lighthearted and funny. The guy who's writing and directing it, he did what we do in the shadows, and that's such a good movie. And and it's coming out right before Justice League, and this is going to be DC's Avengers, and everyone's going to love Justice League, and no one is going to care about Thor, and I'm so upset, and I'm so worried for Thor. Yeah. Well, now it's 2018, and let's head on over to Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok currently has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. That is certified fresh. Yes. Justice League has a 40%. Ooh. That brings me so much joy. Yeah. So much joy and happiness that Thor won and Justice League lost. Mm-hmm. They they're don't finally, they don't know what they're doing. They really don't. How did they do that? How did they finally make the big bus budget Justice League movie that everyone has wanted and fucked up so bad? <laughs> mm-hmm. So let me explain how this movie went for me, because I had so much fun walking watching this shitty movie. So I love this story. So last weekend, I just said, you know what? I I got nothing to do. Mm -hmm. I I just finished doing story time live on my YouTube page. Uh, I got nothing else to do until everyone comes over for Supernatural Saturday. Uh, Fuck it. I'm going to watch this week's movie. I'm going to watch Justice League right now. (laughs) Okay. But the problem was, was that I never saw Wonder Woman. Right. I'm not sexist. I'm just not interested in the DC cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I got to watch wonder woman. I got to watch wonder woman. And then I, after that, I got to watch justice league. So I had a double feature. I sat down and I watched wonder woman. And then immediately after that, I put on justice league and it, it was amazing. I put on wonder woman and, uh, Amber was already on the couch. And she yeah. looks up. She's like, "What are you watching?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm watching. I'm watching a uh, uh, Wonder Woman." She goes, "Oh, okay." God. And then next thing you know, Maxwell comes out. What are you watching? Oh, I'm watching a superhero movie. Oh, that's cool. What movie? And I go, "Wonder Woman." And he goes, "Oh." And I go, "No, Maxwell. Just because it's a girl superhero <laughs> doesn't mean you have to be all upset about it. Watch the movie and decide for yourself if it's shit." Yes. So Maxwell sits down. Maxwell's watching it. Eventually, Bella comes out and sits down on the couch playing on her DS. But then eventually, she's not playing on her DS. She's just watching Wonder Woman. Eventually, everyone comes out. Emerald's like sitting down. What are you guys watching? Oh, we're watching Wonder Woman. Oh, I never watched this either. And she's sitting down and she's watching it. Eventually, Natasha's in and she's screaming at the TV. I just, (laughs) the film, the film was a movie magnet. Yes. And it's just got the whole the whole freaking family watching this thing. And then most of us watch Justice League as well. I think Natasha was like quickly tapped out. And I don't think Emerald was there for all of it. She was there for most of it. But then Amber hung on and then Bella hung on. And 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 it was awesome because just the whole family watched this week's movie. The whole family has has a say in this movie. And I was really excited about that. It's rare that the whole family gets to like gets in on things, you know? Yeah. So let's do some stats. Justice League 2017 movie written and directed by Mr. Watchman, Zack Snyder. Fucking Watchman though. (laughs) Fucking Watchman. I was trying to think of how to describe the Watchmen movie, and I came up with what I think is a pretty damn good analogy. Okay. So, Jurassic Park. Yes. Warner Brothers was so preoccupied 
with whether or not they could make a Watchmen movie. <laughs> that they didn't stop to think if they should make a Watchmen movie. Yes. It's everyone said, oh, this is the like, this is one of the this is the greatest graphic novel of all time. Not only that, but Time Magazine listed Watchmen as one of the greatest novels of all time, period. And this is just like this is amazing. This is like life changing. And this is a, a a staple of modern fiction. Mm hmm. And so Warner Brothers is, of course, like, oh, we got to make this movie. We got to cash in. We got to cash in on this. And so, like, but what Watchmen stands for is you shouldn't make this into a movie. Why? I like the movie. I like the movie a lot. I like the book, too, and I, I found them very similar. Mm, fuck that movie. <laughs> we'll, have to do, we'll have to do Watchmen one of these days. Is it still on Netflix? Was it ever on Netflix? I think it was on Netflix. I don't know. I'll, I'll look into that. Okay. So, so Justice I, I have League. It, so, okay. Well, that's that's something. But is it like, is it like the two hour and fifty five minute version or the special four hour version? It's the special, really fucking long version. Okay. I really do like the animated sequence that they made for the movie the, that they ended up not putting in the movie. It is in my copy. Yeah. Black Freighter. Yeah. 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 That's fucking beautiful. So. And even that was such a fucked up cool story. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. So Justice League came out in 2017. But when the history of 2017 is written, the main story will not be freaking justice league the main story of 2017 will no doubt be a uh, freaking wonder woman mm -hmm. the patty jenkins directed batman versus superman prequel that gets gal gadot's wonder woman character from batman and superman and spells out her origin story now i watched that movie too for this episode and Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's time for a segment within a segment. It's segmentception. Yes. Because even though we already did it, it is time once again for Steve's unpopular opinions. <laughs> yes. And this time around, we discuss the Wonder Woman movie. Okay. Emerald, my 16-year-old teenage daughter. Yes. Said it best when she said, and I quote, like 45 minutes into this movie, she turns to me and says, wait, is this supposed to be good? <laughs> I Yes, it's supposed to be good, and you are supposed to love it. Yeah. I believe that the film was given leeway because of the gravity of, hey, this is the first female superhero movie and feminism and Me Too. And it's very important to women and to little girls everywhere to have their own hero on the screen. And because of the film's sociological importance, the movie wasn't properly reviewed. Yeah. Like a regular movie would be reviewed. Well, I can't really say because... I haven't seen the movie, you yeah. know, but number one, the film is way too fucking long. <laughs> okay. Number two, like the first half hour is in Wonder Woman's home world. And the whole thing is just fucking yawn. Asgard. Yeah, basically. Asgard. In this movie, it was fucking Asgard. <coughs> yeah, basically. Um, also, the film is almost like three hours long and it doesn't need to be fucking three hours long. And then Wonder Woman's home world is just like they're in this like uh, they're in this like hidden island yeah. somewhere. But it's but but it's kind of fucked up because it's like here's all of these actresses who are forced to adopt a ridiculous accent only because the woman they hired to be Wonder Woman has a ridiculous accent. Oh, it's like yeah. if you're, it's like if you're making a movie about aliens and 
the head alien is Tommy Wiseau. Oh, yeah. Then all of the scenes in the home world would have all of these actors like, uh, like that are talking like, we must get the ship ready. <laughs> oh, hi, alien. Like trying to do Tommy Wiseau impressions. So it's weird to see like freaking Princess Buttercup from The Princess Bride saying, we must fortify our fortress to be ready for an attack. Like, ah, <laughs> no, Robin Wright. No. <laughs> and also it's kind of fucked up to say this, but Wonder Woman is really boring until a man shows up. <laughs> okay. But it's like all of these women and they're in this hidden like world. And it's it, it basically, they live in the magical Island of, uh, of, uh, it, they live in the magical world of exposition. Yeah. And it's like, oh, let me explain our story. Let me tell you what uh, the story of our people. Oh, it, maybe I should train. Oh, you should train with these people. Let me tell you their story. Oh, one day I hope, <laughs> hope to grow up to be these people. Yes, those people. Let me tell you their story. And then finally, like Captain Kirk shows up and you go, oh, fucking finally. <laughs> Is, is a plot going to happen? Because I've been waiting for like a half hour of watching girls in ridiculously short outfits fight each other with swords. Are things going to happen now? Thank you, Captain <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> then the bad guy is basically Mr. Generic. It's the same with Justice League. Yeah. Plus well, in, Justice, in Justice League, it was Loki. Yeah, yeah. We we yeah. go over to Asgard. We watch Robin Wright speak weird, and Loki yep. shows up. Yeah, Loki with a with a mommy fetish that was really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It, eventually, eventually, in Wonder Woman, you just get so sick and tired of Amazon's explaining plots. But 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 like, it, it, and the characterization isn't good. And then Emerald is like, wait a second, why? They're going into World War II. Why do they now have one of each ethnicity? <laughs> and I'm like, to be fair, Emerald, that's not a Wonder Woman thing. That's a war movie thing. Yeah. They did the same thing in a Captain America, basically. But but yeah, no, it's a war movie thing. It's a cliche. And I don't know. I thought Wonder Woman would be a little bit better than that. But there's no characterization. And there's an Indian guy and and they call him chief oh the chief is back and i'm like jesus fucking christ okay <laughs> but all of these things were just ignored by critics who were just too busy fawning over this massive feminist victory yeah so and i still do think it is a feminist victory and i do think that young girls need they need heroes too yeah it's an important it's an important film for women. It's an important film for young girls to look up to. If anything, it's important to see that yes, women can also have kind of shitty superhero movies. <laughs> That's kind of important. But Steve's unpopular opinion, sorry not sorry, Wonder Woman sucks. So, Justice League, uh -huh. the culmination of 12 DC movies and over Two decades worth of planning. Oh, wait, that's Marvel. Yeah. This is the culmination of three movies and a few haphazard years of planning. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh -huh. I've said this before. It's as if Marvel made Iron Man, then Iron Man 2, and went directly to Avengers without explaining who most of the characters are. Yeah. And that's the main difference between the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Cinematic Universe is that Marvel's characters are less well known, but they make amazingly fun movies. Yeah. Whereas DC has the most well known superheroes in comic book history, and yet they can't make a good movie out of these fucking things. No. And it's try so confusing. Try and try again. Yeah. The answer they just is trying. no. They just keep trying, but like no one knew who Groot was. Mm -hmm. no one knew who Scott Lang was or the difference between Scott Lang and Hank Pym 
Mm-hmm. No one knew who Pepper Potts was. No one really cared about Loki or even freaking Dave Batista. Mm-hmm. So weird. <laughs> Dave Batista was a WWE wrestler for like a decade. He he went by the by his last name Batista, yeah. and uh, he the WWE champion, and he was like really popular, and people liked him. But then he started people started hating him, and people started booing him. They would call him Batista. So eventually, he gave up on the WWE and said, "I'm going to be an actor." And everyone's like, "Oh yeah, right. What are you going to be like the next Rock?" And then he was fucking. Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's so weird for a wrestling fan to be like, oh man, I hate Batista. Oh shit, he's really good in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really weird that, like, oh shit, that's like uh in next month, Dave Batista and Robert Downey Jr. are gonna be in a movie together. You're <laughs> kidding. With Gwyneth Paltrow and Don Cheadle. Yeah, it's called fucking Avengers Infinity Wars. Oh. <laughs> it's just freaking weird. Yeah. But the point is, like, Marvel gets unknown characters and makes them famous, and DC does the opposite. Yeah. And it's fucking weird. Does very much the opposite. Because it doesn't look like... A, it looks like they're looking too hard for a hit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're looking too hard for it, <coughs> so they're stealing. So they're stealing whatever they can, because like that was cool. That was cool in that movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, so watching Justice League in part, I was watching Thor. Uh, I I was definitely watching Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, and then there were just so many scenes that just popped up where I just, I was just like, I- I've, I've seen this, this, this looks like it was something from Iron Man or something, you know? Yeah. For, for like a whole lot of other scenes. It's freaking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So here's the cast of characters. For the, I was going to was going to uh, break down the plot, but there's very little of that. So here's the cast of characters for this for for Justice League. The big baddie, the big bad guy, is a character called Deep Purple. Yes. No, wait. The bad guy is Great White. Mm-hmm. No, wait. I'm closer. Ah, Steppenwolf. I knew it was one of those. Yeah. I knew it. Was- like shitty bands. <laughs> we stop Def Leppard from destroying the, the world. <laughs> so to defeat so to defeat the bad guy, the Justice League assembles, which includes Night Owl, mm-hmm. aka Bruce Wayne. And let me tell you, a lot of things piss me off about this Bruce Wayne, but the thing that pisses me off the most is the first scene you see Batman. Batman is dangling a bad guy from a roof so that the guy will be scared so that uh, he he's using the bad guy's fear as bait in order to have a monster show up. Basically, it's just like the Rick and Jerry episode of uh, <laughs> yeah. of uh, Rick and Morty. I just came up with that conclusion. Uh, <laughs> so he fights with the monster. The, the monster explodes. The bad guy, the, then the bad guy who, uh, the criminal who he was dangling from the roof shows up and is like, whoa, was that some sort of alien? Some sort of alien monster? And right in front of this criminal, Batman says, are you getting this, Alfred? <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, secret identity, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Are you are you picking this up back at the mansion, Alfred, my loyal butler? Yeah. Like, goddamn, TMZ would be on that in like an afternoon. <laughs> and and really, couldn't you just have said you're Batman? Do you really have to throw a sharp knife at the fucking kid? Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Bit ridiculous. So then the Night Owl teams up with Wonder Emo, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. Diana Prince. She's sad because she had a ridiculously short, quote unquote, relationship 100 years ago. (laughs) 100 million? Yeah. And I hate how all the other Amazons are forced to adopt Gail Gadot's thick ass accent. Like, sorry. Uh. Sorry, Buttercup. So then well, Night that's, Owl. That's, and, okay, that's 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 broke back mountain for me. Yeah. Like everybody everybody was screaming about this movie. Very much like Wonder Woman. It's like, oh, it's you know, it's so bold and all that. And so it wins an Academy Award. And I'm like, I can't tell a fucking thing that he he Fudger is saying. Yeah. Through this whole yeah. movie. It might have been a good movie. I can't tell. Yeah. Yeah, it's freaking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Bella. What, Wonder Woman? Yes. You didn't like Wonder Woman? I didn't like uh, um, I didn't like Wonder Woman or uh, the other one. Justice League. I, I uh, Justice League is good. I yeah. like Flash. Everybody else, they're all jerks. Yeah. So then there's a uh, Night Owl, and then there's Wonder Emo. Then of course there's Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. Which pisses me off because in this movie, basically the Flash is Peter Parker. He's the comic relief, and it sucks because I really like TV's The Flash. I know. I love the. the, the first off, they all look like kids to me. I can't help it. So that's that's yeah. And that's that's like how I relate to the show. It's like I really like the show. It's a bunch of really cute kids. You know? Yeah. They're all yeah. Cute. They're all just they're adorable. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. Also, also I mean not that he's he's not Peter Parker either. You know, yeah. but he's much more of your Toby Maguire Peter Parker. Yeah. Which is like great because we have an opening for one of those. It's just that you have a flash already. You have a you have a the flash. So by not using TV's the flash, DC is saying, okay, this TV cinematic universe is less than. Mm-hmm. That's what DC is saying. That is how but, I would interpret it. Yes. Yeah. Hey guys, this TV show is not important as what we're doing here in the movie. And that's fucked up. Yeah. Then, of course, there's Aqua Bro. Oh, yeah, God. He was really fucking fucking annoying. Why? Really? You're going to do a surfer dude thing through this whole fucking movie? Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't have him. I'm surprised they didn't have him drinking Red Bull while wearing Abercrombie and Fitch and explaining how Inception is so deep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised mm-hmm. they didn't have him uh, at a McDonald's getting pissed off because they were out of Szechuan sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well make him wear a waterproof MAGA hat. <laughs> For shit's sake. Mm-hmm. Then there's CGI boy. Yes. A black high school teen whose lengthy human backstory was featured heavily in the previews, but not in one second of the movie. (laughs) Like, seriously, the previews show him as a human playing football and, and him at school and him walking down an alley while wearing his letterman jacket and all of his face and then they show him in his accident and none of that is in this freaking movie no fucking none of it and that's sad because cyborg is an amazing character but don't fret there's still a chance yeah because cyborg is a character in the teen titans and there's a Teen Titans movie coming out this summer. All right. And it's going to be animated and it's going to be horrible. And I'm really excited. 
<laughs> there was an animated Teen Titans TV show, and it was on Cartoon Network, and it lasted for like a number of seasons, and it took the Teen Titans seriously, and it had an anime style, and people really loved it, and they had relationships, and they fought, and it was a very serious look at the Teen Titans. Then Comedy Central canceled it and replaced it with a weird, bizarre Powerpuff Girls looking hyperactive version of the Teen Titans for very younger kids. And there are still people out there that are really fucking pissed about this. Yeah. But now that crappy Teen Titans cartoon is getting an, a, a big budget animated summer movie. And I'm really excited about, excited about it because it seems to be an animated sort of parody of other DC Comics movies. Okay, that could be cool. Yeah, they're going to be making fun of Batman, making fun of Wonder Woman. And I really like the preview that they have out because they're talking about how excited it, it's a close up of Robin talking about how excited. Finally, the 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 DC Comics characters you want to see are on the screen. And then it pans back and all of the other Teen Titans are dressed as Wonder Woman. <laughs> okay. They're like, what? Why are you guys dressed like that? Because the only character, the only character anybody cares about now is Wonder Woman. Yay, Wonder Woman! <laughs> it's like, wow. Usually DC Comics is not as uh, open about this shit. Yeah. So I'm excited to see uh, Cyborg in a a big movie. And then, so there's these uh these uh the Justice League, and they're fighting uh Deep Purple. Mm -hmm. and they can't defeat him ah you know what we need we need super corpse yes which uh i'm sorry but they do mention a small line in the movie that says that because he's an alien he doesn't his body doesn't decompose like a human's does yeah still you're buried for like a year or two which is which is so much bullshit i mean i mean that's you're still gonna if you're organic matter, you're gonna decompose just fine, just just along with everybody else. Yeah, you're not like, gonna uh, decompose differently. <laughs> you were dead and buried in the ground, and now uh now you're 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 alive again and you're fighting these superheroes, and then you're stopped from fighting these superheroes by uh, Lois Lane who automatically starts like hugging you and touching your naked chest and mm. I'm I'm sorry ew <laughs> ew that's some gross ass shit uh, uh, I'm kind of glad I was not the only one uncomfortable with that yeah fucking super corpse <laughs> The, the only thing I liked about this movie, the only scene that I really, really liked in this movie. Well, no, no, there's two scenes. Number one, when Batman shows up in the Flash's, uh, I don't know, the Flash cave. Yeah. Um, I pause the movie and I go, guys, 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 you see the like 30 TVs he has in his uh, Flash cave? That TV right there? Yeah. That's uh, season one, episode six of Rick and Morty. <laughs> it's the episode. It's the episode where Summer gets a job at a uh, needful things type store run by the devil. <laughs> Rick and Morty, right there, guys. You see Rick and Morty, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." The Flash is watching Rick and Morty, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, okay." Now we can keep watching this shitty movie. <laughs> but that wasn't the movie that I liked. You know, the one scene in the movie that I really, really did like is when they're all fighting uh, Super Corpse. Yeah. And the Flash is running around being all Flashish, and then Superman sees him. Yeah. That was the only scene that I really like kind of geeked out at. And I'm like, yeah, because the flat the Super Super Corpse is as fast as Peter Parker's The Flash. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he, he could see him. Yeah. And you see Superman just slowly turn his head and then see the Flash and the Flash is freaking the fuck out. That was the only scene where like I geeked out a little bit, which is sad cuz it's a fucking Justice League movie. Yeah. 
But anyway, it, it did you see his lips, his fucking face though? Which one? Super Corpse. Super Corpse? Yeah. Uh, I, I I I saw his face. Um I was I was trying to um not did you stare see how at fucked his up nipples. Did you see it? Did you see how fucked up it was? His face. Uh... Okay, let me explain it to you. Okay. Let me explain it to you. Okay, so um, Zack Snyder made the movie, and then oh, the beard, the beard. Yeah, thing. the mustache, specifically mustache, okay. a, a little bit of a beard too, but primarily like a big fat porn stash. So Zack Snyder, he did the movie, and then like his wife was dying or had cancer, or I don't know what the fuck. So they were able to hire Joss Whedon to come in and do reshoots. And he ended up like, Oh my God, this movie is kind of shit. I need to kind of Avengers this up. It was him who was like, we need to make this more fun guys. So he added like a shit ton of pickup scenes to film. And uh, by this time, Henry Caviezel, Cavazel, Hassan Pfeffer incorporated super corpse. He was doing another movie where he had a big fat porn stash. So for a good portion of the scenes that Superman was in this movie, they had to computer generate his face specifically like (laughs) from the nose down. And it's the most glaring part of this is the first scene where two kids just end up getting like a cell phone interview with Superman. And Oh my God, it looks fucking ridiculous. (laughs) Like the whole time I'm seeing Superman, all I'm doing is staring at his mouth and chin like a weirdo. And sometimes it's like, okay, well, obviously this was filmed before. Okay, obviously this was Zack Snyder. And then the next scene, I'm like, oh my God, this was a Whedon. (laughs) Oh my God, look at his mouth. That's ridiculous. What, What the hell? (laughs) <laughs> this this was a Whedon shot because just look at his mouth is fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredible. It's incredible to watch. You can literally see, like they did such a shitty last second. We got to cover this shit up job. Yeah, it's Super Corpse's face. It's amazing. <laughs> I would I would go back and look, but I don't think I could stand it a third time. Yeah. So there's also um, included in the cast of characters. Let's also not forget that uh, there's also Amy Adams who stars as, oh shit, she's in these, isn't she? She What? She's in? Uh, yeah, Amy Adams stars as, oh yeah, she's fucking Lois Lane, isn't she? Uh, I forgot. Yeah. She existed. She just does not say Lois Lane to me at all. Yeah. Yeah, at not at all. All I mean, she's just a little too. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. In my That's mind, her. in my mind, though, I don't care what Amy Adams does for the rest of her career. In my mind's eye, or whatever, mm-hmm. she will always be the slutty one from Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yeah. The cheerleader one from the beauty pageant. That will always be her. Was I got second. She, she I got second the... runner up. I got second place. No, third. <laughs> what? That was her. I, I will always love her. She was, was she the, the one with the puppet Jesus? No, no, that was Denise Denise Richards. She oh. was the one who did the vaguely sexual um cheerleading routine for her talent. <laughs> yeah, she'll always be that for me. Let's also not forget that Commissioner Gordon was played by J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Um and and I'm not uh, I'm not Crossing okay with lines. that. With that uh miscegenation or whatever it's called. He's he's breaking down barriers. I I I did like the fact that you got to see like a green lantern for three seconds. I liked that. Yeah. Bella was watching Justice the Justice League movie with me, and she's like, "But wait, when are they going to go get Green Lantern?" And I'm like, "He's not fucking in this." <laughs> and like, why isn't he in this? And I'm like, "I don't fucking know, but he's not. I guess because uh, Ryan Reynolds is still like a." a sore spot in their minds. 
Yeah. But I didn't realize I have to go back and watch Green Lantern because apparently the director of what we do in the shadows, Taiki Wa Waka Waka, yeah, was an actor in that Green Lantern movie. Oh, okay. So he was in this DC Comics movie. And I, I thought I said the story in the Thor Ragnarok episode. So he's in this movie and he knows it's shit. <laughs> and he hates being in this movie and he's having a hard time sleeping one night before a take. So he just turns on the TV in the hotel and a commercial comes on, uh, an infomercial, and he says, OK, this is going to be one of those uh, one of those nights. I'm buying everything the TV tells me to. <laughs> so he ended up buying all of this crap. He's got like 10 sham wows and he's got this and that. And he also has a shake weight. OK. And he brings it to the set and he's using this fucking shake weight and he's just shaking the shake weight in between takes and shit. And other people, Ryan Reynolds, why do you have a shake weight? Oh, I bought it. A few nights ago, I couldn't sleep. Oh, cool. Can I try it? And everybody's doing the shake weight. And so we had this shake weight on the set. And that is the same shake weight that is used in the opening of Thor Ragnarok. Uh-huh. Okay. When, uh, what's his name? Uh, I was Bone. wondering if that's where we were going. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he bought that on the set of a DC Comics movie, and he used it in a Marvel movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that has to do with there not being a Green Lantern in this, but technically there were Green Lanterns in it, but not the Green Lantern. Yeah. So, so that's fucking Justice League. But it's important to note something. Uh, if you saw this Justice League movie and you're like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. There is another <laughs> let's not forget that in 2011 dc comics after their flashpoint of um multi-comic book story arc dc comics reset everything and it was a big deal and they called it the new 52 yes um, and they reset Batman, they reset Superman, and they reset the Justice League. And it was a really great, amazing story. It was so good. They turned that into a feature-length animated movie. And it's fucking good. It Flash was on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, for a while. I, I saw that. I saw yeah. the cartoon, yeah. Yeah. Barry it's trying really to good. save his mother, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, so there is an animated Justice League movie out there. It's good, and I dare say it's a better Justice League movie than this Justice League movie. And there were Fair there were enough. some things in that story arc that that this Justice League movie straight stole from, from Flashpoint. No, no, from uh, the Justice League reboot in the oh. New Fifty Two that happened right after Flashpoint. That was that one Justice League animated movie where like there's some cussing in it and some actual violence and like like I, I think you said in the podcast you were surprised because you're watching this Justice League animated movie and suddenly Cyborg says, ah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, what am I watching? And I'm like, yeah, no, it, DC, the DC cinematic universe is shit, but the DC animated cinematic universe it's all direct to DVD and it's all fucking great. <laughs> They're all really, really good. And the, their Justice League movie is better than the Justice League film. Yeah. But I will say, I will say that uh, the plot line is weird because because like, oh, here's Superman and Superman is teaming up with Green Lantern to find out what these what these monsters are that are destroying everything. And they decide that oh well these characters are aliens maybe we need to find an alien let's go to metropolis and find this superheroic alien that everyone's talking about meanwhile wonder woman is eating ice cream for the first time yeah and saying i like ice cream <laughs> and i'm like okay that seems vaguely sexist but you know what i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call sexism because because like I'm a dude, and it just seems a bit weird that everyone's 
having these superheroic adventures and fucking Wonder Woman's eating ice cream and saying that it's awesome. Yeah. But then I that was I freaked out when I was watching Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman is going to London and is meeting with the the like British front and on her way she sees someone selling ice cream and eats ice cream and she's like this is good you should be proud of this and i'm like ah shit that's from justice league (laughs) she's eating ice cream they they put the ice cream in it that's really weird but anyway that's all i've got uh yeah i don't think there's anything much else for me to say it was (laughs) it was kind of derivative crap yeah i i I expected a lot more for the for this is Justice League. It should have been a much bigger deal. Yeah. So if anybody has not seen this movie, don't worry about it because you have. You really have seen this. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But I am feeling a little bit better, Bunny. Good. I'm feeling a little bit better, feeling a little bit more uh, spring in my step, feeling a little bit more confident about the future. But still, I'm not yet ready to jump into the award winners and and serious dramas and all that sort of crap. I still need some 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 easy winners. Yeah. So um, I I didn't realize until about. 10 minutes before the podcast, what we were going to be doing for the next episode of the podcast. First off, I have the next two weeks planned. Okay. Um, Two weeks from today, we will be discussing the Disney Pixar film Wally, and Natasha will be sitting in. Okay. Because Natasha has a ridiculous fucking amount to say about the movie Wally. Really? It is yeah, it, it is actually kind of a scary film. If you haven't seen it before, it's it's basically like a horror sci-fi film, but for like eight year olds. It's kind of fucked up. I, I have seen it, yes. Yeah. Um it it doesn't take too much digging to realize that there's a lot of secret hidden shit that they're not telling anyone about this universe. Yeah. So that's two weeks from now. Next week. Oh, that's two weeks from now. Okay. That's two weeks from now. Next week. I'm very excited. Check the cough cough. Also, it's available for free in a lot of places. I actually found a copy of this movie on Pornhub. (laughs) Okay. Which is remarkable because there's no porn in it, but that's just Pornhub. Mm -hmm. Next week. Death. Race. 2000. Okay. The fucking did original. Se- did you send me a trailer for that or something? I saw a Death Race 2000 video like really recently. I did post a copy of it on the Cough Cough. Okay, that might have been it. Yeah. The original fucking Sylvester Stallone and all of that shit. Okay, we we have not done that before. I don't think so. Okay. We're going back to the well. Roger fucking Corman. Yes. Yes. And I'm excited to. I'm going to try and see if I can get Natasha to watch it because she's never watched Death Race 2000. She doesn't know what the fuck it's about. Yeah. Um, I, I think I could really, like, get her into this. Hey, you want to watch this movie? What's it about? it's about people running over people and it's a sport. Yes. And it's, it's really gory and stupid. I think I could really get her to like this film. Is that other one still on Netflix? I mean that if that's still on Netflix, it, we haven't done a double feature in a while. I don't know if it's on Netflix and I don't have it on my, uh, I don't have Netflix on my phone right now to check. Yeah. But I definitely would have time for a triple feed for a double feature if it's still on there. I don't know if it's still on there. I do not know if it's still on there. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. I mean, if it, if it is on there, then fuck, let's do it. If it's not on there, then it. Watch. 
the original. Yeah. Let's see. Because cause the yellow one wasn't bad. Yeah. It, it wasn't, wasn't good either. It wasn't quite the it wasn't quite the original. Well, it wasn't good either. That goes for the first one as well. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it it wasn't bad. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. I believe it's still on Netflix. I'm just not sure. It's 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 kind of like, you know what? Nice try movie. You know, nice try. Yeah. That's what that one is like. You mean the, like, the newer one? Death yes. Race 2050. Yeah. That was the newer one. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's still on Netflix. I am checking right now. Of course, there's always the Jason Statham one. I I never I never bothered to watch that one. It, me either. It's just I don't like it when when someone gets like a like a gritty B movie and says we're gonna make this into a serious movie. Yeah. It's like I don't trust them. Like- it's like Death Race. That's not what I'm watching. Yes, Death Race 2050. It is still on Netflix. Oh, well, then fuck it. Let's do a double feature. Okay. Next week, we're doing a double feature. Death Race 2000 and Death Race 2050. Hell yeah. It's been a while since we've done a double feature. I'm down with that. Yeah. Hell that yeah. a really long time. Yeah, long ass so, time. So we owe it. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our we fans. We do. Sweet. So that is next week. Next week, Death Race 2000 and Death Race 2050. We're also going to be talking about Pac-Man Fever and Steve Garvey. So excited to be. Steve so excited. Garvey. So excited to be introducing a, a, a whole group of people to the uh, wackiness of Michael or Wax. <laughs> so that's next week. But now that we're here finally at the end of this episode and I'm looking out at the precipice, I stand on the precipice of the end of this episode, looking back at, at, at all that we have done. Malcolm McDowell freaks me out. He always has. Yeah. Even when he was younger, there's just something that just doesn't sit well with me and this man. I don't trust him. He's he's always just struck me as an asshole. Yeah, yeah, you know? oh yeah. Big time. It, 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 almost like I, I'm I'm British and I am better than you. Yeah. But that'll be fun. I gotta say, I gotta say though, looking back at this episode, now that we're here again, I crazy. Maybe I'm telling tales out of school. <laughs> I think this has been a pretty good episode. I think this has been a damn good episode. Ah, this episode got a damn, guys. Yeah. He gave it a damn, so you know this was a good one. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And on behalf of Maxwell and Eleanor and Natasha, And all the rest here at the Galindo household, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens! Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do